Hello everyone, Reese from IJC Models here and welcome to the third part of the Spitfire build for beginners. So I've got Clarice back here up in the man cave with me to finish off the, well to get near the finish of the build. So today we'll probably do in the, um, well, we'll be doing the guns, that sort of stuff, follow on from the last episode which was the putting the, the fuselage and that stuff together. Um, and this one will cover a little bit, a little bit of uh, primer and base coating, that sort of stuff and putting the first colours down. So stay tuned and stick with us and you'll be able to see the next part. So what we're gonna do now is, um, I'm just gonna explain quickly, um, on the instructions here, you've got parts um, 6A and 6B. And what that is, is the undercarriage. So that's um, the wheels, the wheel well covers and the arms for the wheels. What I'm actually gonna do, what we're actually gonna do is, we're actually gonna skip these two steps because the best thing to do um, when it comes to painting is um, to either blue blue tack or sellotape the um, or any sort of something that's sticky back into the wheel wells and then put the wheel well covers on the top so when it comes to painting the bottom because the, with the Spitfires the bottoms and the tops are two different colours so the, the bottoms are usually like a white or a blue and the tops are camos with the invasion stripes and everything like that um, so you actually get a proper nice finish on the wheel well cover um, and then we'll show you about painting the underside and sorting the the uh, the arms and the wheels and that sort of stuff out at the end. Because okay. sometimes it, what happens is is that if you've got it on the bench, you can like lean on it and it snaps the arms and that sort of stuff. Um, so it's always good either way. Um, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to skip to part seven, um, and we've done half of part seven already, which is putting the wings and the fuselage together. Um, and just down here, as you can see. Um, We've already cut out the um, exhaust ports. So these are the two the exhausts on either side of the plane. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and glue those in. Um, what I will show as well when we come to painting is just a neat little trick just to make it look as if um, the plane's been started, that sort of stuff. So you get all the, the exhaust dust and that sort of stuff come out of the exhausts. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pop, pop those in. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. So it's like that, yeah? Yeah, so the little, um, as you can see, that the, um, let, me just grab, oops, let me just grab this one. So with these, they're actually angled. Um, so what you do is you want to put the angle, so the this bit's at the front, and the, the, the rear of the exhaust is facing backwards. Yeah. So it, obviously, so the, the dust comes away from the, the, the driver. Uh, driver? Pilot. <laughs> Easy driver. Yeah. <laughs> Baby driver. That's supposed to be a good film, you know. What is? Baby driver. Baby driver? Yeah, it's a, a new film. A new film? Yeah. <laughs> I've heard of Boss Baby. I've not heard of Baby <laughs> Driver. And Dunkirk. If you guys haven't seen it yet, go see Dunkirk. It is amazing. What they do with one of these... <sighs> not No spoilers here. But just go see it, it's good stuff. <laughs> Is that nice, relaxing? <sighs> the smell of glue and. After a long, stressful week at work. Yep, nothing better than coming up and playing with some plastic. <laughs> Not that we're playing, for you avid model makers out there, we are engineering. <laughs> I, we are engineering. <laughs> Just for those few hours you're at your bench, you're in your miniature engineers. What about in my dreams? And in your dreams, yep. It's not one of those things on Facebook. What you're, what people think I'm doing, what we're actually doing. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it? It's looking well. So that's the beauty about these 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 little kits. They're so so easy to build, and they they, they come up quite quickly. And they're brilliant for beginners. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I'll actually show you my first kit because um, it's just literally just there. Um, a good friend of mine. If I can get there. Yeah. <laughs> A 
very good friend of mine at one of my model clubs actually gave me this. I was going to mention this last time, but I completely forgot. This is a 116, uh, 126 scale. That's 172 scale, sorry. 176 scale. Yeah. Um, brand gun carrier. And I, this was my first kit that was ever bought by my dad at the age of seven. So that was 20 years ago. <laughs> old kit. Old kit. Less of that. Less of the old. <laughs> okay, so... The exhaust ports are now on, aren't they? Yep, yeah. so they're all nice on there. Oh, okay, let's have a look. Right, let's just... I'm going to flip the plane over. Upside down? Yep. Because obviously this is what this bit is here. We're not doing A. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see that down there. <laughs> <laughs> so part eight is... Is the tail. Is the tail and uh, the rudder and the, the two... The two tail... Two tail planes. The two fins. Fin. Fin. B6 and 7. Yep. <clears throat> Looking for. B. B. <laughs> See, that's why it's good to enable your sprues. <laughs> I always get too confused, dude. That's okay. We can allow for that. <laughs> it doesn't take much. <laughs> Say nothing. You know what's good for you. <laughs> and A nineteen. Yep. I think the fumes are getting to me. Yeah. Mm, yes. <laughs> We're all mad here. Mm. <laughs> it's just the fumes, guys. Said We're not all mad. Hotter. What's hotter? That? Hotter? Mad Hatter. Said the Mad Hatter. The Mad ha Hotter, yeah. The Mad Hotter. That's like Harry Potter and the Mad Hatter together. No. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You swear at me. <laughs> Look at that, there we go, that's looking good. I've actually found another one of my sanding sponges that I was explaining about in the previous video. Um, so this is what I was telling you about, this is one of the, uh, the other sponges, this is a bit more coarser than the blue one. Um, I think, actually, is it? No, oh no, my mistake, the blue one is coarser. So these are your sponges, they actually conform to the the shape of what you're sanding. So if you're if you're doing like the the, the fins there, um, it'll actually conform. If you sort of hold it just a bit like that, so you kind of like hold it like you'd play a harmonica or something like that. You don't, you don't put a, a lot of pressure on it, and it will conform to the shape of what you're sanding. And then that way you won't lose the shape of your your wings or your your fin or anything like that, which is always very good. <laughs> Right, so now we've got the the fin and the two rear wings cut out and sanded off. What we're going to do is just glue them to the aeroplane. Um, so what the best thing to do is to do the fin first. So if you do this one first. Um, so that'd be good. Yeah, if you like do, it, do a bit of a quick bit of a dry fit. Like that. Yep, there we go. That's looking well. Oops. Oops. Until you drop the Until fin you on drop the floor. It. Yeah. Real-time model making, people. This is what actually happens. When I was just thinking that that kind of looks a bit wonky. Well, that's a look. Oh no, that's okay. Can you look? That's all right. Would it? Yeah. Oops. But so yeah, it is wonky, Chris. Um. No, that's okay. Is it alright? I was just holding it funny. Yeah, no, that's cool. It's all my fault. <laughs> You're still learning. <laughs> that 
That was a nice way of saying, yeah, it was all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> so the best thing to do with this, if you just run a bead of glue along there and pop a bit, there's a little hole there um, where there's a bit of tab on the actual fin. What have you been doing to this brush? Uh, that is a neat little trick where you get the bit down the bottom. So that's obviously where it's been sat and bending. Um, but yeah, there's a little tab just on there, just here on the fin, let's get it in frame this. Um, so it's, what you do is just fill out the little hole in there, just for a bit of glue in and just run a bit up and down there, the back of the, the plane there. You've got a bit of tissue. Um, it should be on your, oh yeah, no, it's down here. What's up? Oh no, that's all right. That's okay. So yeah, extra fins okay on this sort of stuff. It doesn't. Um, it's not too bad. But if you get the thicker stuff on now, it actually pulls the paint off. That pulls the uh, green bit off of the, the cutting mat. So that's another tip for you guys. If you're using the the white glue or anything a bit thicker, just be a little bit careful because you will pull the the surface off of your uh, your cutting mat. See, I did that on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Educational purpose. Educational. Yeah, we're all 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 about education on this channel. So this is your fins. Okay, and blow that faces backwards. So yeah, it goes yeah. Like that. Yep, that's it. Okay. And I'll show you a nice, neat little trick to keep them nice and level. If I can find my square. Excuse the rustling of the tools in the background. sometimes those those rear wings they can fit nice and tight and they'll sit nice and flat and sometimes they just sort of can bow I a little bit. Can I have a bit of that tissue please? Yeah. Thank you. Sticky fingers. Sticky, sticky fingers. <laughs> Nothing worse than sticky fingers. No, nope. or sticky fingerprints on your uh, on your model. Yeah, I think we're going to have one of those. Oh, that's okay. Well, I'll show you how to get rid of that. We'll it's on the bottom anyway. Yeah, yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll show you. How to get rid of the, 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 the fingerprint marks as well. Because that is one question I get asked quite a lot. How do you get rid of fingerprint marks? It's very, very, very simple. But I'll show you that in, in the sort of like pre-painting, that sort of stuff stage. Straight. Yeah, they're sitting flat. Oh yeah, that's all right. Because usually what you could do is if I'm they're happy with that. Yeah, if they're a bit, a little bit loose sometimes the rear, the rear wings there, they sort of tend to sort of droop a little bit. Um, so what's always good is just to prop them up with um, a paint tin or something like that, or you know uh, a set square, and that will keep it nice and flat. And then once it dries, you can take it away and it will sit nice and flat then. Yeah, you happy? Are you drooping a little bit? No, we're all good. No, you're all good? Okay. So if we put that side to, to dry, um, we'll see what the next bit is. Um, right. Now we can do nine. Yeah, now we can do nine. <laughs> that was eight, this is nine. <laughs> um, so eight, uh, number nine, sorry, is putting, I think what we'll do is, again, another tip, um, Part number eight, uh, part number nine even, sorry, step number eight is, I can't really see that very well. Are we in focus? Yep, there we go. So part eight, uh, part nine even, is putting all the little bits and pieces on the bottom. But another good, a very, very good tip um, to avoid these bits knocking off when you're still building is to leave all the little bits and pieces like aerials, um, the, that's what they call a pitot tube on the end of the wing there. So what that is, is, is like, it's your, your, the pilot's speedo, it tells the pilot how fast he's going, that sort of stuff. Um, and it's always good to, um, I say although it does say to, to do that next, it's always good to do those little bits and pieces at the very end, okay. just so you, you don't knock it and that sort of thing. We've got a bit of droopage. Yeah. yeah. So we've got a bit of droopage? This one keeps dropping down. Yep. Yeah. So if you put the aeroplane flat on the, 
bench. So we've got a bit of a bit of droop there, so if we pop it here. Um, if you look over there, there should be an enamel pot tin, so it's a little silver one. That one. Is it gonna fit? Oh, it's gonna be a bit too big. big. Right. Or I another big stick. Or you get a sander and just pop it. Oh no, that's still a bit too uh if you just you just sort of pack out the 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 wing till you get the right sort of pipe that you're happy with. So that will make it when, it, when the glue that's sets right, it. That's isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So when the glue sets, it will set it nice and flat. Oh, wait, which is that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what we've got here, sorry, what we've got here is um, just a tiny little blob of white tack, blue tack, anything like that. Um, anything like this will do. Some people use double sided sticky tape. Some people use masking tape and fold it on itself. Um, so what we're going to do is, if you take the Spitfire, and that should be near enough dry so it's not going to fall, mm -hmm. um, turn it over. And what we're going to do is, you take a tiny bit of the blue tack off and put it into it, roll it into like a, a thin line, like a sausage, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, that should be enough. So if you just roll it between your fingers, just so you're making a little, a little bit. Might have to do this for me. Yep. Yeah, okay. So what we do is, so you get a, your, your thin piece of blue tack like that, um, and you fold it over a little bit. So you've got a nice little bit like that, and you. Pop it into the wheel well, like this. It's always good if you if you're struggling a little bit just to use the knife, just to pack it in there a little bit like that. So it's it, it would so it would sit where the wheel well cover would sit. And what you do is you come along with the wheel well cover, and then just pop it in there like that. So it's covering the whole wheel well a little bit like that so what you, what you then what we'll probably then do is see this this here there's like a bit of half moon bit just there um, another good thing to do is to to make sure you don't get paint in your wheel well is just to cover that with a bit of blue tack and then obviously do the same this side okay so so you take a little bit more than that and then you roll it into a little ball like that just so you just want a little bit just so it just so just text the the wheel well cover just onto the wheel well pop it in the little hole like that there we go just make sure it's off here and you pop the wheel well cover On there like that, and then that way. Oops, he says you can't even get it in there. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That way, you make it. Make sure it's all nice and flat, like that. So it's nice and flush, nice and flat. So when you come to paint over that, um, it's not going to come out, and you'll get bits everywhere. Um, so what I was saying was, so to simulate the wheel being there, you just get another little bit of tack. There we go, I'll give this bit to you. Just... Yeah, hang on, we get another bit of tack. And then what you do is you poke it in there like that, just to cover the... So what we'll do is we'll pack this out and cover the wheel well, just so you're not losing that green inside the wheel well, okay? So now you've got the wheel wells, pack, wheel, wheel wells packed out. I can't speak this evening. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'll show you how to, um, so just in the, the rear there, there's a little bit of a, a bit of a naughty 
fingerprint mark there, bit of a cheeky mark there. So what I'm going to do is show you how to <laughs> show you how to get rid of those marks, that sort of thing. Um, it may look a bit scary when we first start doing it, but oh. the um, the outcome is pretty good. Um, so if you get that blue sponge just there, actually, um, start with this one. So if you start with, if you feel that sponge there, it's got a coarse side and a smooth side. Yeah. So if you just gently take the sponge and the, the, the plane and just gently rub it. With which side? With the coarse side first. So if you just gently, you haven't got to put any pressure on it at all, just literally until it comes becomes sort of like a mat. I'm just a bit concerned because it isn't dry yet. Yeah, okay. See, it's starting to become sort of like a matte sort of consistency. The, the shiny bit, the shiny fingerprint mark is, has become sort of like a matte, like the, the rest of the plastic. It's just scratched. Yeah, yeah, no, that's okay. That's not a problem. I'll show you how to get rid of that. Okay, so now what you do no, is you... I'm not done. I'm trying not to bend it. Yeah, no, that's okay. So what you're actually doing there is you're smoothing the, smoothing the, the fingerprint mark flat. Um, excuse me. So it's sitting flat with the rest of the... the to plastic. That should be enough. It's still shiny. Yeah. I'll tell you when it's enough. <laughs> Who's teaching who here, eh? <laughs> Who's OCD here, eh? <laughs> Bit that won't go away. Yeah. Just there. Got it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't want to go. <laughs> That's right, when you buff it out, it will. Okay. It'll go. So if you flip that the do. flip the sponge over to the smooth side. The smooth side. Again, just gently you can do it a bit faster this time. Just buff it. Yeah, I'm it trying not to bend it because it's not dry. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. If you if you buff it. Like you'll be buffing like your nails or uh, if you're polishing your car that sort of thing um so just so it sort of i just meant because you said to do it faster i'm trying not to oh yeah no no yeah thing. no it's just um so if you do it a little bit quicker this time uh you do it a bit quicker so you do you start you with your coarse side you flip the, flip it over and then do the smooth side for a little bit um until it's here it's sort of just starting to squeak so it's... how does it go it makes it like a little like sort of. No, tell me. <laughs> it makes purposes. it makes like a little like, mm, 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 like a little squeak <laughs> noise. Oh, guys, if you could see the face he just pulled when he made that <laughs> noise, it was hilarious. Um, so what or what you're trying to look for is so it's looking a bit like this bit of plastic. So see how it's just starting to come back again. Yeah. So I carry on yep. for a little bit. Yeah. No, what you do is you then come to this that's this this one, and you start. You just wet the. This is a, a polisher. You just wet the end with like. A bit of your finger or something like that. There you go, that's enough. And then you just, again, the same sort of principle. I think we need more glue. Yeah, that's it. I'll go back and sort that out in a minute. Okay, and then. It's still shiny. Yeah, I know, I know, but what we're I'm just explaining. No, there's a tiny bit of oh, shiny. Is there? That's okay, because what we're going to do, no, no, what we're going to do is that that shiny will be like this shiny. So, if you take the white side now, yeah. again, a little bit of little bit of water, a bit of moisture from like over your your pot of water or off your finger, um, and then just like you buff in a, like your car, you do it a lot quicker, and then what you what you're waiting for is like, like you a, do with my car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you're waiting for it to sort of squeak. That's the chair. 
Yeah, yeah, that that that's the noise that you're waiting for, or it, until it sort of like bites a little bit. It doesn't help having two no. little chairs together, does it? It looks there good. There you go. Yep. You hear it going? That sort of that little noise it was making then. You're talking. I can't hear anything. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's what you're waiting for. Because if you look now, that wingtip looks a bit like this does. Yeah. So you brought it back to your natural, um, natural way it was um, manufactured. So yeah. it's come back to your sort of shiny, sort of semi trans, uh, semi shiny um, plastic again. And that's always that's, it, it works wonders on if you're doing canopies and you've got a canopy that's a bit, a bit rough, and you take the seam one out with the the coarser um sanders and sponges and then once you've done that you just literally buff the, the scratches out with the with a, with a buff with a, a, a buffer this chair is really getting on my nerves. yeah i need to oil it okay right okay so what we went ahead, went ahead and did was uh, we just went and primed the uh the actual the model there uh, what I did was so we didn't um, uh, get primer in the the cockpit that we've already done. Is you just get a bit of masking tape, um, and like you did with the, the blue tack, you just pack it in there so it doesn't um, doesn't you don't get overspray on the. It doesn't ruin the cockpit. Yeah, it doesn't ruin the cockpit. But even we have got a little bit of overspray, but I mean that can get that can get sorted. That's not a problem. Um, um, the bit I was explaining about the wheel wells. Um, is so if I just get a pair of tweezers, these ones will do. So if we take these off very gently, there we go. So you've got a nice primer surface there. I mean, if you're doing a bigger aeroplane, oh, wasn't probably quite dry, but um, oops, there we go. If you're doing a bigger aeroplane, what you do is because um, Clarice is going to uh, brush paint this, um, what you'd usually do is if you're airbrushing, you would just leave it on, airbrush your, your colours on. And then take it off at the end. Um, but the point you raised was, but paint in these separately would be a bit easier. Um, so I'm going to take these bits out well, here. Well, not necessarily easier. I suppose it depends on preference. Preference. I personally yeah, yeah. would paint them separately. Yeah, yeah. Reese prefers to do it this way. Yeah. So here we go. If we take that, that one's come off quite easy there. And then we just take the bit that we packed out there. Oops. So I think it, it's safe to say um, the common principle when making a model is that it is down to preference. Yeah, yeah, it's just all personal preference. Um, so if we just get a knife just to take that bit out of there. And then just unmask the blue tack there. Oops. Like a pro. And then like that, as you can see in there, I don't know if you can see it very well. Um, You've got some nice okay. nice green wheel wells and the same with the canopy. So what we do now, I thought I just did well, I thought I'd just do that just while we're at this stage now. Um, and the best way to I mean again it's down to preference. What I would usually use is um, if I was primer and for an airbrush is um, some Vallejo surface primer, which looks a bit like this. So that is thinned down enough and it's all ready to go straight into an airbrush. So that's what I would use to prime if I was doing a, a model or something a bit bigger. Um, but another good cheap way to do um, models, and that's how I did this one, was just some uh, rattle cam primer. I mean, this you can pick up uh, sort of, um, what do you call them, like um, arts, and crafts. arts and crafts, them sort of places. Um, places. I suppose... Um something like this you possibly could even get in a DIY DIY shop. sure yeah yeah that's what I was, that's what I was trying to think of like, or a utility shop that sort yeah. of thing um, but the only thing you've got to remember is when you're using rattle can is because it comes out quite quite fast and you can't really control the flow if you hold the model about 30 centimeters away so you hold it quite far so you're not um, you're getting like a nice mist rather than a like a, a harsh, a, a harsh spray. light spray yeah yeah and what it actually does is it actually keeps all the the surface detail that you've got in the model there 
So like all these uh, little lines and that sort of stuff. I suppose the panel lines. Yeah, cut yeah. As well. You get a very very nice even coat. And as you can see there, it's actually come out quite nice. I've missed a bit on the the tip there, but that's not really a problem because you've got a little bit of primer there anyway. So that will that will paint quite nicely. And also, obviously, you, you've got to have a, a primer coat just so you've got something to key when you the uh, when you go over the top because some of the uh, the paints that we use um, are like like the uh, these little bots of bottles of acrylic and that sort of stuff are translucent so sometimes you get a little bit of um, plastic shining through or it's just good to key you've got mm -hmm. the, the, the paint's got something to bite to um, okay so now let's just get these wheel wells out of the way what I think another good thing is to do as well is that once you obviously got the wheel wells here um, I think what we'll do is we'll go back and paint the underside of these wheel wells wheel well covers the same color as the wheel well mm -hmm. so when it's there it looks quite nice mm -hmm. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll put those pop those wheel wells aside, and then we'll carry on and do the next, um, the next bit, which okay. is the, the propeller and the machine guns, that sort of stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, so if we pop those on there, so you're looking for is this the... dry now? Yeah, yeah that, yeah, that can that can be handled. I mean, a, a, another good thing with the the rust oleum. I mean, it doesn't have to be rust oleum primer. This is just one I picked up from our local. Um, a local hardware store. Where was this from, Izod's? No, this was from uh, the range. The range. Um, is it dries very, very quickly? I mean, I've it dries within minutes. I mean, at the moment we're we're going through summer, so it's going to dry a bit quicker anyway. But even in the winter, it does tend to dry a little bit quicker. Um, so yeah, we'll crack on and get on with the next bit. Okay. Um, which part should so I do, we do first? So if we do the machine guns, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, just do machine guns, because then what we'll do is we'll paint the prop separately and I'll show you how to do um, the yellow prop tips. Pretty easy way. Oh, you want the knife there, don't you? Yeah, he stole my knife. <laughs> so a good thing is, I mean, I mean, not a lot of people, uh, again, it's all just down to modeler's preference. I mean, bigger areas, that sort of stuff, will always prime. Some people prime the whole sprue first before they even, they, they wash um, and that sort of stuff with the sprue. They and then just spray the whole sprue and then paint as I go along. Some what I, what I prefer to do is bigger areas like the actual finished model or the, you know if you come in near finished and you think you're getting near painting then um, what I usually tend to do is primer it and then paint it and then all the little bits and pieces that go onto it like the guns and that sort of stuff I'll paint separately because the, the actual guns on these are actually the same colour as the body. Right, so what we've got here, um, as you can see, or what you may not be able to see, are the guns. We've gone out and cut those out. So what we're going to do now is mount the guns to the Spitfire. Again, a very minuscule sort of job. Um, and they go... In that one? Uh, no. No, they go... Can I see? They go... Oh, it's not actually a hole there. They go in. See where that little square is. Mm. They're supposed to go on. Oh, they don't. They just sit on. So it might. So they just go. They go there. Okay. You see the little circle there? Yeah. Again, another good thing about primers is you can see all the little little panel marks, that sort of stuff. Um, because the guns on this actually they're not actually. Oh, it's it's actually moulded. It's flat. I can yeah. See. So you, you you rather than put it into um a peg into a hole you just put it flat on so sometimes what it might need doing is just you just put a little yeah, bit of glue so on actually, it actually that needs to be sanded down because it's yeah so it's flat um so the best thing to do is um a little bit of glue on the wing sit and hold the gun until it it gives like it grabs and then just sit there and hold it a little bit until it it's nice and solid and then you can take your hand away or until you feel comfortable you can take your hand away without it drooping Oh. Right now, so what we've got, what we're going to do here is we've got the last few little bits of the instructions. So ten and eleven really is the last little bits going on. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just jump ahead and we're going to start painting the the colours just here. So what Clarice is about to do is I don't know if you can see it there, but on the the nose of the Spitfire, there's the like I was saying earlier, the white underneath. 
the, the bottom of the, the, the spit is white. So what we've got, what we're going to do is just mast off from the bottom of the, the bit of the wing up to the nose, just so we don't over over paint when we when we come to do that. Um, and what I've got there is uh, Tamiya Bendy tape. Um, I think that's the, the one mil tape I've got there. Just it's just small enough, just so um, you can. Um, just, just it's only a small area we need to mask, so it's not a big, a big issue, um, and that will just stop any overspray. Okay. So the good thing about where the, where that white's placed is it's actually on a panel line. So as you can see, I don't know how you can see that there, but on the on the, the picture there, you've got a, a panel line with some bolts, and that's actually moulded into the model. So that gives you a good reference to to put your masking tape, so you haven't got to worry about um, overstepping the the mark or anything like that. So. You just hold it together. Yeah. Thank you. More hands for always helpful. <laughs> I should have been born an octopus. <laughs> I think any model maker should be born an octopus. <laughs> it's fiddly. Mm. But it'll be worth it. <laughs> Thank you. I'll you got it? Yeah. I think also what we'll do is we'll run a bit of masking tape down the length of the body there because there is quite um so where the where the body bottom of the spit and the side of the spit is um just it's just to give yourself a line. So when you take the masking tape off when you've painted, it'll it will leave quite a nice edge rather than um than having a like a wonky line, that sort of thing. So as you can see just there, see how we've got the got the line in just there like that so you you can paint up to that line and you haven't got to worry about it over going yeah. okay so we'll go and do the back bit now as well okay so what we've got there is we've got where a nice line um because obviously the bottom of the spit file is white so um with the back of the spit um some of you may not know that the, the white doesn't actually come down the side of the the spit it just it just sits on the bottom um, so what we'll do is we'll go away, paint the white, come back, and then we'll show you how to paint the camo. Okay. So as you can see there, we've gone away and we've painted the bottom, or well, the bottom half of the Spitfire white, um, which, as you can see there, as we was explaining earlier, really makes these wheel wheels pop quite nicely. Um, and we've done the, let's pop that down there, and we've done the wheel, the wheel well covers there as well. Um, what we will need to do is do the reverse side in the, the green so it matches up nicely. Um, the reason we, we did this off camera is just because the, the painting um, with, the, with the brush, that sort of stuff, can be quite lengthy. Um, and obviously drying times as well. And obviously you don't want to sit for us and just watch us sit here in silence painting. Um, so what we're going to do next time um, is, I don't know how well you're going to see this because the white balance will be miles off, um, is the panel lines. Get some of that bit of paper. Uh, let's get some of this. Okay, this so the panel lines. I don't know if you can see this because of the, the light there. Totally sure. Yeah. Um, are the panel lines on the bottom? But what I'll do is in the next next video is I'll show you how to make those panel lines pop out. Um, and obviously we'll get on with doing the top half. So what we'll do in the next the next video will be um, painting the top half of the Spitfire. So what we'll do is we'll show you how to do the camouflage on the top there. Um, 
and pop, make all the little bits of the top pop out. Do the bottom of this as well, so we make all that pop, and then we should be somewhere near the finish line with this one. Um, and obviously we'll do the decals and that sort of stuff as well. Um, so if you stay tuned with us on RJC Models, you'll see the finish of the Spitfire. Um, if you've enjoyed our videos, pop a comment, uh, pop a like in the thing below. Uh, feel free to comment, thumbs up, subscribe. Obviously, it all helps us out, and obviously, just so it, you know that you've enjoyed our videos. Also, in the, the links below will be links to our Facebook page, that sort of stuff, where we update quite regularly. Um, so, that is us for another episode, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. See ya.